welcome back at the Mandela National Stadium. More action from Alabella, Uganda and the Super League. This is a highly contested encounter. Two sides with completely contrasting results since the league did finally kick off. The 16-time league champions, AC Villa, the most respected side in Ugandan football, are up against a victor side that has not won a single game in the league so far. Four of those being losses and a single draw sitting rock bottom of the standings. AC Villa will be coming into this game knowing they can go, they can keep second position in the current standings but moving in closer to the leaders themselves, Maroons. And it's betting the action will be some of the fans in the stadium, lots of Villa action, those in blue, popularly known as the Jogoza in Ugandan lingua, AC Villa. And these are games they easily have always won, but with the current league, it's a game that is very unpredictable as victors will be fighting for bragging rights as well, plus pride. The fans very, very in anticipation mode, hoping to pick something from this one. And of course, AC Vida will be hoping to pile more pressure for a side that has always finished in comfortable positions in the Ugandan Super League. As uh, some of the fans continue with anticipation, it's a game that has been highly contested over the seasons with victors pretty much picking some points of AC Villa. Villa in their customary blue, all blue, on the left of your screen. And of course, in green and white shots with green stockings is a victors. Their battle in today's game is picking a point, something they have done only once this season. And AC Villa themselves will be hoping to add that there are three wins already statistic that is only bettered by Maroons that has won all the five games they have played. So then AC Villa, Benjamin Ochan does return to the starting 11 after being injured for most of the start. Dennis Okot will captain this side, Constantine Nalmoso and of course Yusuf Begobak will be hoping to guard the back line. They'll be looking for goals from Arthur Semazi, a perennial campaigner in the Ugandan Super League, Mohamed Abdara and of course Paul Musamali as the coach Mike Mutebi goes in for a 4-3-3 formation. Victors using pretty much the same formation. 4-3-3 will be hoping Martin Ndule can keep the Villa attackers out for the 90 minutes. Shahibu Kabari, Edward Katende. And of course, the side will be captained by Joseph Ansuga with the team Kizito as one of their main attackers up front looking for goals. Ahmed Mzaransu, not so many changes have been made to this squad from their last game here at the Mandaya National Stadium. Only three being made by Dominic Kabuye. A man who's got lots of experience from Bangladesh and Oman, hoping to turn their fortunes around. And in case changes are needed off the bench, Lotare Yasin, Hamda and Suga. And surprisingly, Mut Kawesa does drop to the bench in today's game. As for Victor Sande Olise, a perennial bencher for this Victor side, does start on the bench once again alongside Victor Kabenge and of course George Obiara. Match officials today will be Asman Kabuye. We'll be making sure we have an incident free 90 minutes and he will be helped out by the first assistant Ahmed Kibedi, Akiriz Sempija, and the fourth official David Elayu. Of course, uh, the match commission already walking away from the latest proceedings of Fred Barenzi. Of course, talking to both captain is always very important before kickoff, them picking sides, also telling them it is fair play. Let's have a clean game. Try to have a game that will be appreciated by all the Ugandans out there. Monday, Chomukama will be leading the quest for goals for the men in green. Ten squad goals for this victor side, really struggling with finding goals. They see Villa dropping Hood Kawesa to the bench, other Semazi. Formerly in your picture coming in, it will be alongside the likes of Yusuf Bagotha. Trying to come in and get chances and maybe goals for this AC Villa side. Mike Motebi, being very excited ahead of today's encounter. He knows he still has a big chance of winning the league as a coach. As close to winning it back in 1997 with KCC, but of course left the club. With a few games to go. Now this is the man who is under pressure, still looking for his first win. Dominic Kabuye with his victor side. So can he pick maximum points from today's game? 
side showing some good resilience in their last game. Picking a point from that one. Today's game will suddenly be harder than probably it was because they're taking on a team that has lots of pedigree in Ugandan football. As Asman Kawie kicks us off here at the Mandaya National Stadium. So then both sides that will be hoping for three points. But for neutral, you get to think victors need them more than anyone else. An argument that AC Villa will not take in. Mark the 16 time league champions AC Villa coming in with Mike Mtebi. But not, not so many changes have been made to their starting 11. But other Semazi does come in and lead the line. AC Villa, of course jury is still out and so many question marks about the Mike Mtebi regime seem to answer his critics towards the end of last season start after Villa started slowly like they've got it all to do again because uh, like I said the jury is still out there they've not started badly they haven't lost a game actually so they can hope to continue in the same vein here some good young players there great prospects well, victors might not have won a single game this season, but suddenly their performance against Buna Moaya will be very inspiring to do it was. As a result of that, but Tim Kizito does get a starting place today. He did come off the bench and was practically the game changer in that encounter. And the coach, Dominic Kabuye, decided to entrust him with that left flank in today's game. Ed Wadkatende. Doing more defending than attacking in this opening two minutes here at the Mandia National Stadium. It's a game that so many coaches will always be very cautious about. Mark, it's always very hard to take on a team that is actually struggling with the start. This side, of course, struggling with relegation victors. It's a side that can very, very easily pick points off you. Yeah, certainly. We saw how they bounced back in that game. Our first on the Channel of Champions this season. That is offside. Side. But they, I mean, they came back with a great second half, inspired by that man of Tim Chizito. Drew 2-2, two, two, not easy. And, and they've got a very big record against the big sides in this league, victors. They play football like, like, like it's a cup competition rather than a league. And when it comes to the cup competitions, they do really, really well, victors. They've actually represented Uganda and the continent a couple of times already. Yeah, plus we also did say they are very good when it comes to cup competitions, this victors said. So sometimes their form in the league is very deceptive. As I see an outlook to break away with chances coming in. A left, right, and center is a good chance for them. Mariano in the game. That is a good shot. It's a good ball in. Mohamed Abdallah is marginally on side. Shot is on the wrong side of the post. The goalkeeper was stretching. Martin Le might have got a hand to it if it was on target. It goes down as a very good attempt on goal anyway. Segawa stretching this one down the left. And back to the goalkeeper Benjamin Ochan, one of uh, the products of youth football in this country. Did come through the Kampala Kids League. Not so many of those footballers have made it to this level. Our viewers in Nairobi, Kenya will know about Dan Serun Kume, who also came through pretty much the same youth academy as Benjamin Ochan. Well, popular known as Musei is lighting up the goals down in Kenya. Now there's a very good chance of coming in for SC Villa once again. Moving forward, can they find space in the box? Good running, and the goalkeeper is out quickly. Martin Lule. Dennis Okot, the captain of this Villa side today. As Otim now does what he did just in his last game, but not the best of passes. From him, he was looking out for Michael Owinya, another man who's just been brought into today's starting 11 by Dominic Etrude. And you know, of course, tradition known as one of those sides that will equally control possession in matches. We'll do a to do exactly that. Maybe find a goal as good dribbling comes in off that left flank. Three great shots in the box. Blue shots, sorry, and he cannot find any of those. As this will go out straight for a goal kick. Mike Mutebi, pensive mood for him, does not seem very excited. You know, his team has started. This is 
good skill again. The, sh the crosses of a hit, really. Well, Villa are showing early signs here of the amount of pressure they're going to be putting on Victor. And this man of Tim Chisito is complaining about the lack of help, perhaps from uh, everybody else. He has got to double back as the man playing wide on the left side of midfield. But much is coming. This is Segawa running into the box. He'll try to stretch this one down to the right. Abdara. Back to the centre. Intercepted. And now Victors can try to break away. They've got options up front. And that will be an upside on Ahmed Musaransu. Yeah, that's the call. Villa playing a very high line. This is reminiscent of Maroon's games. Something which has been adopted by more than half the Uganda Super League this season. So chances coming into the box and that will be an offside. You see Villa having bigger chances of moving forward at the Semazi. Yeah, by the time the ball comes back to him, he's offside. So SC Villa, as expected, starting off the better of the two sides. Having more possession and, uh, well, goal attempts as well. Like I've always said here on the World of Champions, the most important statistic is one the top of your screen. Here they are once again, turning and twisting on that left flank with Paul. Well, Somali doing a very good job with the early exchanges on that left flank. We've got Alan Chiza at the center of the park, one of the players they brought in in the transfer window. We'll be hoping he has an impact on the game today. Coming from Itoda, the relegated sides did not win a single game in the Ugandan Super League as of last season. Villa okay. floating yet another one forward, looking for Abdallah. Manon. In control, a little bit of catchy defending for this victor's side early on in the game. Semazi onto the right flank. Can this corner come into the box? That is a miss kill. But Tim does well, does get the return pass. He's got full pace in his game and he will be trying to exploit that as the game does go on. And Ahmed Muzasaru should be leading the line for them, who wasn't part of the team in their last. 2 2 all draw against Buna Moaya. Yusuf Bagotha, one of the players in the center defense, on the ball right now, stretching this one down, looking for Constantine Nalumoso. Quickly finds his captain. Dennis Okot. As this one is pushed forward now, looking for Otim. He's got full of running together with Abdara in the box, trying a quick shot, and that one will not endanger or actually take the confidence of Benjamin Ochan down. The easy pickings for him at the moment. Bit of a battle in the center of the park. But Alan Kiza will win that one. Here is Otim once again. Good pass coming in for him. An adventurous strike. Again from Shaka Sekata. Probably Victor's feeling the impact of not having much of the possession mark, not being very patient enough now to move closer to the Vida goal. They're taking most of their shots way outside the goal. And you maybe think that is some of the few options that they will be having earlier on in the game. Yeah, that's as much that's, that's as much as they were timid and pensive in the first half of that game against Bonamaya before they came out in totally different colors in the second half. Provide some excitement and uh, flurry of goals in that 2-2.
Okot does well, gets himself some space of crossing into the box. He will do that. It's a tricky ball, does get off at the bar. Could have headed anywhere. The goalkeeper was off his line. That is Martin Lule. Across from the captain, Dennis Okot. Villa still with the ball here. Stretching this one forward, looking for other Semazi. Don't find him, but do well. To find Muhammad Abdara. Can he get this one into the box? Does well. Finds his captain once again. AC Villa in crossing positions. Not the best of crosses. Constantin Nalumoso, central defender, pitching camp now in the Villa half. Good ball coming in from Mande Chomkama. Of course, couldn't find Shaka Sekatawa up front. Both sides having their share of little possession, but I see Villa having more constructive and shorter passes at the moment. As Abdara is the latest recipient here, looking for other Semazi, cannot easily find him. Well defended by Dennis Sebuguao. Victor's doing a good job in holding that ball up front. They are looking for a team now who will be offside. Again, that high line. We caught about up to four green shots offside. This was from Dennis Okot, the captain. Came off the crossbar. I think he was trying to cross, but the goalkeeper was almost wrong-footed there, Martin Dule. Okot at 22, only 22, the captain of this Villa side. Very, very young side. The oldest players on there, actually, Arthur Semazi and uh, Fred Sakajolo at 24. The rest of them at 20, 21, 19. In the case of uh, Mohamed Abdallah, very, very young side, this Villa team. So, Victors, taking a long one up front. Can they find spaces in there or they cannot at the moment? Ahmed Musasaru, there's the lead striker in there. Man in yellow boots haven't, hasn't had the best of possession his way. Both sides getting a little bit very cautious earlier on today. Maybe we shall need a goal to light this one up. So, caught. Yeah, Semazi. Good movement by this Victor's side. They find some space up front. That is the bigger of the questions now. A court. Into the midfield. Good possession by SC Villa in the last few or so minutes. Seem to have been a handball of Segawa Daniel, but the referee is theirs. No, they tucked at his shot to start with, which is why the referee called it. Now, if he controls that ball, they are in on goal. But he loses his foot in Shaka Sekatawa, the young man. They see the back line not troubled that much. The opening 14 minutes. The pictures have showed glimpses. Counter attacking football. How good they can be with those. Salan Chiza takes this one back to Benjamin Ochan. There seems to be an early substitution now. Quick change in tactics for Dominic Kabuye. The early changes you'd say bring on Henry Kassiri. The tactical change being made by the coach in a game like this one. Maybe a kind of tactics came out with from the dressing room, Mark. I wonder what it is. Whatever it is, it's it's not for a knock that he got or anything. Looks like he's in perfectly good condition edward katendes just that he's not executed according to the coach's plans so uh, even if he's angry with a change maybe angry with himself and his performance the coach is having none of it and has made that change so it's a defensive change but by uh, dominic Kawier. probably now victors are expected to defend better long one from kiza and find his target will be intercepted by Swaibo Kabali. Divide one of the sides known to be very perfect 
in their style of play, at least by the coach. Mike Mchebi has been always insisting you must play like Barcelona. And I wonder how hard that is in the Ugandan Super League, especially if you have young players, Mark. It's not easy at all asking these kids to keep possession and, and have a great movement like they, they, well, the legends of Catalonia. And then also when they don't have the ball, squeeze the life out of the opposition by hounding those on the ball and closing out those without it. Watch, watch, watch. it takes years of grilling to get a side to play like that, but Mike Mutevi has always fancied himself as a man who can do that. So the Bell Ugandan Super League characterized by lots of surprises. We're wondering who will pick the first goal from this one. Arthur Semazi, the elite striker on the ball now. Looking for options. One of those was Richard Kulabako, who's just been brought down at the edge of the box. Yeah, this is a foul. Well, well Kulabako had made such a good turn. Joseph Nsubuka decided he was not going any further. It's one of those that I call good foul. Well, might be a good foul, but this could cost them the draw they are currently enjoying. Yeah, the kid they just brought down, Klavako, is only 19. I was telling you about the average age of this team. He's a senior five student, Leon College, Busunju. Oh, he's able to bring this one into the box, and the goalkeeper has got to punch that over, Martin Lule. This is well taken. That is a good one. From another of the youngsters, Mohamed Abdallah. We've talked about extensively about him, by the way, Abdallah. He's 19, they call him Abu Trika. After Sag <laughs> HO the box can see Villa get the lead there. Honestly looking for the captain Oko taking this one back in. The goalkeeper has got to quickly come off his line, which he does. Martin Lole. Hey, I was telling you about Mohamed Abdallah, nickname Abu Trika. That is the legend of uh, Egyptian football, the man who led Egypt, the Pharaohs, to three straight Africa Champ Cup of Nations and uh, led Al Hafi to all those Champions League titles. Great right foot, that's why they uh, this kid has got a very good right foot, that's why they call him a trick. And you can saw from that free kick, well executed. Says that Martin Lule was in the right place at the right time. So AC Villa piling on the pressure I learned in this game. Don't forget victors as well have had their share of chances in terms of moving forward, but most of them have been counter-attacks. Should call against a play. This is chances for a save. And same as he brings this one in. It was never going down on target. Yeah, this is Semazi going for goal. This is Asaf Moebas, the coach of uh, Maroons. He's putting on blue, you would think he's a Villa fan. But um, he and Mike Motevi actually coached Maroons together when they first came up. Uh, to the Bell Super League before they were relegated. Mike Mutebi left and uh, Asaf Mubaza took, uh, took charge. He's Maroon side dominate games as much as Villa do, as you can see from the possession stats there. So a good one from Chomokama. Mande looking out for his lead striker, Ahmed Muzasaru, being offside. Yeah, that high line. Just in time, yeah. Just in, just in time, they showed us Asaf, Asaf Mwebaze because Maroons use the same one as Villa. He and Motebi have exactly the same philosophies in football. Motebi, Villa's coach, and Maroons coach Asaf Mwebaze, who you just understand. They read, they sing from the same hymn book. Oh, I like the hymn book, but the football and religion have been very close over the decades. Some parts of the world they will tell you football is actually a religion. Long one does come in, so then you're not troubling. Martin Lele. So, shall we see a goal before half time to light this? Big stir up. Suddenly, we've seen lots of those in the Bell Ugandan and Super League over the last few days. This Villa will be known as one of uh, the high-scoring sides 
in the Belgian Canadian Super League. Scored 11 goals already in the four matches they have played. Well, that's an average of about two goals. Yeah, it's, it's a good one. And in the other five games we've had in the Bears Super League since we went live on air, we've not had a single score less draw. Good twisting and turning coming in, four victors. That official does put his flag up, but the referee will play on, and Villa now will try to break away with Abba Semazi, who is captain. Here is Dennis Okot. Looking for a long one, probably. Does find options up front. One of those is Semazi. Doesn't give it to him. Segawa, back to Okot. Villa playing it short. That was out of possession there, quickly. Comes back to the man who just came off the bench, yes! Henry Casilla. But here is Villa now. Can they find space with their captain? Okot doing more of ball receiving in the second half. Ready this one into the box. And Semazi does well. The goalkeeper is off his line. Semazi does a good job, sets it back up, and that will be as close as it gets. Good chance coming in for Mohamed Abdara, the 19 year old. This is great first touch from Semazi keeps the ball in play if only just and then sets up Abdallah this shot is way wide but Abdallah is knocking on the door by the way Villa signed him from Victor's on a free so he's looking to to put one over his old team and um, he's had a couple of opportunities already so it's an old boys business now can Abdallah hurt his former employers he suddenly willingly do that. Bearing now he's got new bosses at Villa Park. As Victor's try to break away. Well controlled by Constantin Nalmoso. Long one looking for a team. He's got best. He does well. First touch from him. Young man did come off the bench in the last game, but suddenly has had his critics shut up because of his performance for the new coach especially as as he losing out position here once again joseph Nsubuga, the captain takes a long one up front he's looking for options one of those is muhammad musasaru running into the box now victors have got a very big chance this one coming in pastor chan to a team can he find space no he can't and, uh, as this ball comes in, Ochan comes off his line, but he's not sure what he's doing, the Villa goalkeeper. He stays in no man's land. If that drops for a team, he could be in trouble. The goalkeeper, experienced goalkeepers just don't do that. Dennis Sebogwao doing a very good job. At the moment, in his Atha Semazi, the lead striker is making to be he's known as a no nonsense manager. He will drop any player as long as they don't perform to the instructions. And as a result, Oleg would go on the bench. Absolutely. Mark Montebi would do that. He, would, he can even take you off inside five minutes if you're not following the game plan. But then, so is Dominic Cabo here on the other side. Many co young coaches. Plavako running into the box. He's only got one option in there. That is Abdar. Cannot find him. Well, that's staying. That will be a throw in. Like what so many players thought. Thought that was out. Emazi, another player. He's been in the Ugandan Super League for well, a pretty long time. Yeah, and uh, Villa signed him from police for 11 million. That is one of the more expensive signings in Ugandan football. So he had better show the quality worthy of 11 million shillings in transfers. They got him from Palias, Palias Athasemazi, one of the seniors on this team. At 24, he's the oldest, like I told you. Only he, only Sekatoro is an age mate. The rest are younger, so he's got to lead by example. Well, 11 million can do lots of things for you, Mark. Including buying a car. Um, and a piece of uh, land in some parts of Uganda. No, yeah, a car would not be top of the list if I got hold of that. Well, would you want to give me some of the options? There's, there's, a, few th there's a few things I'd, I'd think of, honestly. Buying a football team, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, there are teams that I could buy for 11 million, yeah. <laughs> and then and then I'll be an owner of a football team as well, a philanthropist and all. Oh, you wonder if you could pay their salaries for a season of the 14 million? Pretty much can't. Uh, no, you'd have to. You know, in Uganda football now, you have to have fine corporate sponsorship. 
to sustain a football club. Henry Cassidy, almost this one long forward, looking for options. One of those was Shaka Sekata. The referee does suggest there was a high boot. Victors will have a chance to attack now. They take that one pretty quickly into the box, looking for Shaka. Can't find him. This will go straight to the goalkeeper, Benjamin Chan, who was a little bit slow on that kick. Now it's Villa's turn. The 19 year old Abdara doing very well, keeping the ball but losing out quickly. Only as far as Kiza does with it as well. Here is your team now. Does well. Keep this one into play, finding Shaka up front now. Shaka twisting and turning. Can he find space in the box? This one will come straight into the box. It's a good chance for them. And the second tower, the free head, not that much under pressure. But maybe the sunlight is affecting him as well, Mark? Just a little bit, but he's not that strong in the air. Having seen him against Bunamwaya, this is a great delivery. First of all, the, 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 the back hill is elaborate, but it's really good. And the delivery is really good. He's on his own. Shaka Sekatawa, his father, Isa Sekatawa, is a legend of Ugandan football, scored as many headers as, well, you'll ever see goals. And he's, um, at, at Express at Night Hill, he became one of the greatest strikers Ugandan football has ever produced. He's walking his footsteps, but um, seems to have totally different attributes from his father, this young man, Shaka Sekatawa. So, free kick for Vira with the captain, Denis Okot. He's got four options in the box. Can he find any of those ball floating? One of them is Semaz. He can't find it. Well defended by the captain. That's been a better job. But it's a chance for SC Villa now. And Segawa could have ended this goalless run we've had for 27 minutes here at the Mandela National Stadium. Now, chances are not going to come any better than this. Daniel Segawa finds himself in space. Ball comes to him. And it blazes over the bar from about 10 yards out. That's a missed chance. Villa still moving forward, looking for pressure. They're asking so many questions. This victor's defense. Latest is Abdara. Segawa, the man who just missed the latest chance they've had as the team tries to clear his lines. Not any further. Villa still in control of this one. The referee does suggest. Richard Kurabako. And Segawa were fouled by just one gentleman in front of the park. So a miscue coming in from David Bala. Does not give Villa the chance to have possession as the team takes this straight back to the goalkeeper, Martin Lole. Segawa, Kurabako, looking for chances, tries to take a shot, not having the poor he probably hoped for. But Villa having lots of possession just around the 18-yard box. And this is the chance, this is the upper Semazi entering the box, but that will be an offside. Lots of possession coming in for the Jogos, just outside the box, but they are not having that final nice pass. They're having lots of shots which are finding it very easy. Yeah, either the pass or the shot. Is not coming off for them as we see Segawa being caught offside. Victor's giving them a test of their own medicine. Villa have been using that tactic for the last 28 minutes. But they need to compose themselves in that final third. They are clearly dominating this ball game. They need to make that tail. A court. Yet another SC Villa attack. Quickly finding Abdara Muhammad. There is Segawa. The young man very much on the ball. Kiza. Back to Segawa. Good possession by AC Villa. Lost out this time round. But can Victors do the counter attack? No, they cannot because it's back to Abdara Muhammad. Finds his captain. And it's a court. His dribbling skills are brought to test. At that very moment, AC Villa struggling to win a league they have won for 16 times. In a few years without doing that yeah i was telling you earlier about owning a football club because um like, and i said corporate sponsorship is the way to go now the days of the sugar daddy are over mike Butevi knows about those days very well Hello, when he was playing for kcc his biggest rival was villa we are owned by the biggest sugar daddy ugandan football has ever seen patrick kawoya sunk his entire fortune into this SC villa the battle of the reason they have 16 titles and made their name on the continent was because of the amount of money he spent 
to bring together a team that had Majid Mosisi and Ronnie Vuvia and uh, Sula Kato and uh, all those guys, uh, the Zaid Tevesikwas and Tua Hachibumbis and Paul Hasules. This is the foul from which Villas won their free kick. So th those days are over. We had Sugar Daddies then, Express had their own. Patrick Chiwanuka, KCZ had Adipondo and all, but now it's about corporate sponsorship. So Richard Kulawako brings this into the box, looking for chances. AC Villa just can't find any of those. It does well, keeping the ball. Grant look. Kushaka just can't find him. And Keiza will take this straight back to Benjamin Ochan. AC Villa suddenly having lots of the ball. Opening. 31 minutes, which has about their share of chances. In his possession, sometimes they're a little bit deceptive. But here is Avasema running into the box now. Iman, the goalkeeper, he cannot get space through. Still a chance for them. Here is a chance against the line. It's a very good defense piece being exploited by this Victor's side. This is a good ball over the top. He's on side, gets the better of the defender. He should be lobbing this over the goalkeeper. It's straight at him. The second one is a good chip, but then there's a man on the line to keep victors in it. And same as he should be doing better here. Lift the ball over the goalkeeper. Somehow, it's not worked out for them, Villa. But they're getting ever so closer. Richard Kulabako was the man with the second chance. And his attempt was cleared off the line. David Bala. Rachi, Rachi. Muhammad Abdallah finding Kiza. Tries to thread this one forward. It's a good pressure from AC Villa, but suddenly they cannot find the goal. And Mike Mutebi will have sent them out there for. Dennis. Kiza trying one forward now. Semazi seems to be through for the second time, and that is once again good defending. <laughs> from Dennis Sebuguao. Yes, good clearance, just in time. Villa side piling on the pressure. Good corner into the box. Can this find the back of the net? Not at the moment as SC Villa are struggling to get the ball. Victor's clearing. Kiza trying to take this back. Kiza one of probably the biggest workhorses in the Ugandan Super League. It very well last season. Was his side had to be relegated later on in order. And uh, this time round, trying to try and win himself a title with the Jugos. Watch your back. But lots of competition in the centre though. Victor's side has a few athletic midfielders as well. Long one up front. Now they are looking for Shaka. Does well keep this one into control. Got lots of options in the centre, but can't find any of those. Because Constantin Nalumoso is with him. Long ball. Now looking for Semazi. He's through once again against the goalkeeper. But Victors are dropping back in numbers and clearing their lines. Two good chances coming in from their lead striker. Yeah, it's a good ball over the top. Semazi is peeling off the defenders really well. His first touch lets him down on that occasion. And the victors' defenders close in. The Villa knocking on the door. Will it be open soon? And it's still very open to debate. If chances are anything to go by, then Villa are close and close at winning this one, at least by the first half. Long throw from the captain into the box. Looking for Kulabako, doesn't find him. Segawa misses it. Now Victor can decide to break away. Got lots of options. One of those is Mike Owenya. Owenya. He's got quick feet as well. Takes a long one into the box. It will be well defended. As Villa with Kulabako will try to break away once again. Kulabako doing well, keeping possession amid tackles. 
Dallas pushing it forward looking for Abdara and that will be out for a throw in we are using both wings in good measure let us come into the box looking for Semazi quickly off the line and the goalkeeper was off the line but the third official does suggest it was an offside as well done a good job in beating that offside rule but suddenly this time round we are marginally on offside I and mean, the victors have been deploying that high line the thing is that they're doing it from a lot deeper closer to their goalkeeper sometimes linesmen will miss those calls referees certainly won't see them they depend on the assistance for those and sometimes assistance will miss them a bit dangerous to play like that Put a man down. David Bala, one who has just been booked, does not seem very comfortable. The clash with Yusuf Bagotha. Bagotha seems fine. Instructions coming off that Victor's bench. Well, seems fine. So I see Villa struggling to put that ball down over the last five minutes. Unlike what their customary style of play is, they'll be very excited with the kind of chances they have had earlier on. Sagawa trying to break away, cannot take back position through Amanda Chomukama. Under the ever present Alan Kiza in control of this one once again. Here he is on the ball now. One of those players that Bob Williamson probably will be looking at in the near future. Very hard working, always wanting the ball, wanting to control possession, very hard on the tackle. Not the tallest of footballers. He's very willing, and now there's a very big mistake coming in from the captain running himself. This is Shaka. Can he find a goal? No, he can't. It's against the bar. Shaka. Shaka Tower. Ahmed Muzasaru. This is the ball over the top. That's a terrible mistake from a team. Muzasaru gets into the box onto his left foot. He's got all the time in the world. He actually takes that time, measures his shot, beats the goalkeeper, but not the upright. Desperately unlucky. Victors will be ruining that missed chance. So Ahmed Muzasaru, guilty of missing, could easily have had a shock leader for Victors here. Well, if the Fondit's predictions are anything to go by, and expect Victor's side to take the lead, but suddenly they have shown the reasons why they would. They have had their share of chances in front of the Villa goalkeeper, Benjamin Ochan. I see Villa having no loss so far. Just them and Maroons with that statistic. The rest of the sides in the league have lost a game or two. Of course, victors, just like Kirayanga losing the most games. Oh, it has been for both sides. And it's pushed forward looking for Chan and that straight away to his safe hands. It started the season because of an injury, Benjamin Chan. He'll be hoping to catch up this time round as Asemazi breaks away once again and that will be an offside. All too eager to start his run. Semaz is being caught offside several times here. And the passes to him sometimes are overplayed. Getting the guy to sweat and saying, if you they bought you for 11 million, you better prove your worth. Side. 
Well, of course, picked just one point from their last two games, drawing 2-2 with Bruno Moya. Game was live here in the World of Champions. But of course, beaten 6-1 by the defending champions Bruno. Express. Oh, two-footed challenge from Joseph Subaka, the captain. We have had tackles at the center of the park so far. One of the men responsible for that, Alan Keys, are very hard on the ball. Yeah, is the captain, the man who cleared the ball off the line, does give it away. Can he be in problems for that? No, he's not. He does give out the ball once again. Joseph Onsubuga. Now, victors have lots to defend. Here is. Chances coming in for them up to here. The captain Dennis Okot. Can he cross this one into the box? Yes, he can. Can he find any of the options? No, he can't. Kulabako stretches it wide. Still looking for options for AC Villa Dallas. Crosses this one into the box. A pretty low cross. Yeah, he's Segawa now. Good pressure this by AC Villa, and that will be an offside. Just a few clumsy movements being made by this Villa forwards. They just can't easily find space. The movement probably is very questionable at the moment, Mark. He has some of the decision making too. Oh, that, that was a tight call. Really tight. But there was a green shot playing him on. Tim trying to get better of that and probably get closer to the 18 yard box, does it? But Victor will be with the throw in as we get closer to the end of the first half. Victor so far have one draw in this season. It was against the 2010 champions Bunamoy. Scored just four goals since the season started, Victors. Then have gone on to concede 19. Goal difference being negative 15. The worst in the season and in the league as well. What can they concede today? Is Sevilla have got to make sure of that? Still struggling at the moment. Then with other Semazi having two or three chances just in front of Martin Lule. Tsubuga takes a long one up front. He's got two options. One of those was a team. I had to identify who of the two sides has actually won the battle in the midfield, Mark. I haven't had lots of possession at the center of the park. It's been lots of long balls and battles coming through both wings as well. Yeah, absolutely. Most of the time we see Villa coming, springing into action is when the ball goes wide, either with their right back and captain Dennis Okot here, or when there's a ball over the top. Well, been, Sekawa has been on the ball quite a bit, but mostly they've tried a ball over the top to go to Arthur Semasi. Try and beat that offside trap. They have failed on several occasions to do that. So chances coming in as other summers is brought down, and the referee does suggest that will be a free kick just at the edge. It's Semazi and his trickery. He is clearly beaten. So AC Villa, as we close into half time, can they get something from this? Richard Kurabako standing over this one. Been joined by Dallas, but uh, Kurabako seems to be the option to take it. It will be him. Been lots of late goals in the league so far. Kurabako brings it straight into the box, punched out by Ilule. And this will go straight. We see Villa. Yeah, Villa continue to dominate territory. Still knocking on the door. Here's Abdallah. He taken a breather, if you like. Segawa. For the run from deep. Does not quite come off. So Villa get themselves another set piece here. Closing in on half time. They're looking to take the lead. They would be fully deserving if they did. Somehow, victors have still kept them out. 
They in swinger. The goalkeeper comes out. The shot. Well over. There's the corner again. Goalkeeper's been using his fists really well. Rebound. He's always rising. Vila, back in possession here. Good footwork. Now the cross on the far post should come in from the far post and it does. Cleared by Dennis Sebukwao. And that will be a foul. Alan Kiza is the man who's been taken out. Feeling the pain there. Kiza. That's a pretty high boot. Catches him on the knee, Michael Winya. He's a lucky boy. Should go into the book for that. It's one minute added on. This could be the last kick of the half. And trickles towards the goalkeeper. Martin Mule. Now Victor's can launch one final for a forward. He's broken down already. And there's a half-time whistle from Asuman Kabuye. Referee calls time on the first 45 minutes here. 45 minutes of stalemate, in which a couple of chances are fallen to Villa, more than just a couple anyway. Guilty parties, Mohamed Abdallah, Arthur Semazi, even Alan Keyes at the very end there could have got in on goal. Daniel Sekawa missed the open, most open of the chances Villa created in this half. Victors have defended gallantly, but still, you feel they're lucky to go down still level in this game. Several times Villa have cut them apart at the back. But at halftime here, it's AC Villa nil, Victor's nil.
So 45 minutes gone here at the Mandela National Stadium. No goals so far, nil-nil between the 16-time league champions AC Villa and Victors. At the end of the day, it's been an action-packed first half. But the most important statistic, as always, are the goals. And we haven't seen goals in the opening 45 minutes. But like I said, the scoreline might be very deceptive because we've seen lots of action for both sides. So the bigger question is, what is the problem with both sides in the first half, especially... Especially considering we've got an AC Villa side that is currently third, taking on a team that is rock bottom of the standings as I speak. And to answer those questions, I'm still joined by the ever smiling Leon Senyangi. <laughs> uh, nil nil. Yeah. Uh, you'd expect Mike Mutebi to be the more disappointed of the two tacticians. Well, AC Villa has uh, had more chances at goal than actually victors themselves. Victors could already have uh, broken the deadlock with that very one clear chance uh, that uh, Muzaffar had. Uh, but well, his, his attempt actually just hit the post and, uh, well, you could have thought that he could have tucked that away. But Villa through uh, Abdallah Muhammad have had a couple of chances. Arthur Semazi, very, very, very lucky. Well, unfortunate though, not to have uh, taken the, uh, Villa in the lead. We might uh, be seeing uh, uh, lots of chances coming in the second half as well. But let's talk about the possession in the opening half. SC Villa having most of that possession. It doesn't count. Certainly it doesn't count. Like we've been saying all through, if you have as much possession, it has to equal up to probably the number of goals you have. And AC Villa have had the chances up front and uh, just as well, probably 60% uh, possession. It just hasn't helped them though. If you're taking on a team like Victor's, that is struggling with even picking up a win in the Ugandan Super League. I'm looking at a situation where he must be blasting those players in the dressing room now, saying, guys, we are taking on a team that is rock bottom. We are second and we can't get a goal. Well, trust Mike Mutebi to do that at halftime. But uh, suddenly, victors are not a side you're just going to push over. We saw them here on the weekend. Uh, they came from behind two goals. And I remember telling you they would leave this uh, level. But they came from behind and scored two goals. So they haven't given much of a chance to Villa themselves. And I think uh, they could come back and surprise Villa at a, uh, later in the second half. Mm, let's take a quick look at some of the highlights from the opening 45 minutes. And as expected uh, by most of the pundits, AC Villa were fast on the run. Well, absolutely, AC Villa were fast on the run. And uh, there, Mohamed Abdullah, the Somali there, should have suddenly tucked uh, that away. But uh, very good work from uh, Samazi there. He just didn't go for the selfish bit of it. He played in um, uh, Abdullah and, well, with a very good shot, nice effort to it. It just missed the direction into the side netting. It went. Well, just 19 years of age, Abdara, but he kept pushing and giving Villa the chances to make sure Villa can't get a goal. This was another attempt by them. Well, as again, Dennis Okot, the captain there, and uh, well, Martin Lule just did read that cross quite well, and bang, it hits the, 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 the crossbar. You never they could have found the bottom left corner and into the net, and Villa would have been counting it at 1-0. Mm, Lule could have been in problems, but then this is a massive chance, and Lule had to stay on his feet. Well, tapping that one over, it was a very good uh, chance from Abdallah. Again, he's the man, the man that has been tormenting uh, uh, victors uh, in the first 45. It's only a matter of time before he really pushes that ball to the back of the net. We're waiting for him to see whether he'll just provide the same well, when Somalia plays here in Sakafa. Well, when it was done and dusted, this Villa was still you know, piling some pressure. Uh, but as well, this is Semazina running into the box. And Arthur Semazi, suddenly, he needs that goal probably against his former bosses, that's Victor's. And uh, this is a chance he should shoot from, well, the closest of yards. Blast that ball right, give it direction, and between the post it goes. All right, and of course we also had victors having their own say in the game. They did not have that many chances, uh, though this is still AC Villa once again. And this is a one-on-one. -on -one. Well, a one-on-one -on -one situation and, uh, well, very good work from uh, the captain there, uh, Joseph Nsubu, got to go and actually replace goalkeeper between the posts. Um, um, uh, Paul Musamali had that one uh, uh, good enough for goal, but with a very good chip, a very good direction, well, Joseph Nsubuga was just in the right place to save victors on the day. Mm, chances were coming in thick and fast for this AC Villa side. And of course, Semazi should have put this away. The goalkeeper does come out, does well. And look at that. Uh, the captain is all exactly on the line. That is Nsubuga trying to make sure he does spare his own blushes. And of course, this also helped them uh, to make sure they can stick in the game and maybe don't go, a goal, don't go down uh, in terms of goals. But this is uh, victors now. Not so many chances, but this was close. Not so many chances, but poor ball reading from Constantin uh, and Nalumoso there. For a defender, all you have to do with an area ball like that is head it back. That's the simplest of things you need to do, with, and that's what you're being told in training. But, well, for um, uh, Muhammad Muzasaru there, nicely placed, Ochan beaten, that should have been 1-0. Mm, that could easily have been a 1-0. So let's take a quick look at the statistics from the opening of 45 minutes. 
I always focus on one. Shots on target. Six to three. But look up. Nil, nil. <laughs> it's been the story of uh, both sides probably. Uh, mostly AC Villa here today. They've had more chances at goal. Arthur Semazi, Abdallah there. And uh, they've just failed to get uh, that goal there. I still think the numbers don't really count much here. But uh, looking at uh, the shots of target, well, not so much uh, for uh, both sides. And uh, the corners, the set pieces. AC Villa have had more of the set pieces. And this is where they could probably nip in a goal just in case they can't really get it from uh, open play. And of course, it's been a clean game as well. Falls 5 against 12, only one yellow card. Of course, there is no red card in this game. But do the offside show anything anyway, Leon? Does it show any of the teams <laughs> is attacking probably more than the other? Well, I, just as well, the offsides are, are more as deceptive. But most of the both sides are playing more of a very tight defence line. And that is why you're having more Villa, that is uh, the, the, the attacking side that is attacking more being caught offside by just much more. All right, let's see if they're not using their corners in the game, but suddenly having more of the possession here at the Mandia National Stadium. And as we head into the second half, suddenly both sides need three points uh, from uh, this game. What must be going on? in those dressing rooms. Well, I guess uh, Mike Mutebi is roasting his boys for having uh, missed such, lots of those chances there. But for Dominic Kabi, I think he's telling uh, Victor's players, well, just be cautious, try to hold this uh, defence line uh, quite tighter. And I think uh, we'll hold on there. They need a point. If they can get the three points, then well and good. Suddenly, both tacticians will be looking to their benches, try and make sure they can bring in a few changes just as the second half does roll on. The bigger question, though, is who do they bring off the bench now uh, if all options are anything to go by? Well, if options are anything to go by, you have uh, AC Villa throwing in uh, Rashid Mohammed. He probably could uh, throw in much of uh, uh, the... the, the uh, the force up front and uh, Hamoud Nsubuga as well is a very good player. I think he would uh, be a very good addition. But for Victors, they would mostly need well. We'll get back to Victor Kabenge. He played here against uh, uh, in, in the in the two-two draw against Pisca LC. But Sunday only say you called him a bencher. Let's wait and see if he'll be thrown into the deep end. Say, call it the deep end per se. And. Uh, <laughs> You never know, he could be the surprise player for the day. Trust me, I do like that name, Sande Olise. Most of us will know it for a Nigerian footballer. But of course, he's on the bench. I don't expect Sande Olise from Nigeria to be on a Ugandan bench <laughs> suddenly. Uh, but he will be one of the options they'll be looking up for, including Victor Kabengi, who did come on in their last game against Namoya and had pretty much a good impact. Yeah, he definitely had a very good impact. And I still think with the chances that uh, Villa are missing, he could come on for Victors and shock the 16 time uh, league champion. Mm, I didn't have a chance to put you on the spot before kickoff. <laughs> AC Villa, and listen to this. 16 time league champions. Yes. Currently second in the standings. Taking on a victor's side that is a rock bottom. Tell me you're giving victors a win. <laughs> well, you can you get me there on spot, but I still think victors could take this one away. All right, thank you very much. We shall go for the second half and see if victors actually can come and pick maximum points from this game. If they do, it will be their first win of the 2012-2013 Bell Ugandan Super League. But of course, you will be the witness today because it's live. An exclusive from the Mandaya National Stadium on your World of Champions. Quick break. When we come back, we have the second round. And we're also saying, Endiwa! Yafe.
Welcome back to the Mandela National Stadium at Nambole. The Bell Super League is live on the World of Champions. Third day of live coverage since we came back last weekend. This is the last of today's games. AC Villa locked in a deadlock with victors. It's still 0-0 here on 45 minutes in which either team will look to find a winner. Villa making a change straight away. Sekajolo is coming off. Sekajolo has come off and they have introduced David Casivante. Delaus Chiwalabi actually. Delaus Chiwalabi is the man who has come on. AC Villa. Looking to make their dominance stay. They were the dominant side over the first 45 minutes. Fluffed you know, several you know, chances you know, you know, to score. Between Abdallah and Segawa and Semazi and Paul Musamali. They could have got a goal there, they didn't. They have it all to do in this second half. Victors themselves had one very good chance which they slammed against the upright. Muzafaru, Muzasaru, the man who couldn't find the bottom of the net in a one-on-one situation with Benjamin Ochan. Dila looking to uh, make some ground on Maroons at the top of the table there. Maroons lead them by all of five points, although they've played a game more. And now they've got a corner kick. Ali running for Villa, they're looking to score. In it comes, the header. That has drifted wide. Arthur Semazi, the man who leaped the highest, not the tallest player on the pitch, but the one perhaps more, most hungry. Got caught offside about six times in the first half alone sign of intent from the young striker who's leading the line virtually on his own it's a good early pressure from the jiggers can they rip some fruits from it it will be very open to the bet going by how this game has come so far yeah they come once again looking for options left right and center and the referee will call for free kick <laughs> Yeah, he is uh, one of seven left footers that is the Villa has filtered today. It's, it's incredible how many left footers uh, Villa have put out there. It's all of seven, apparently. Something which I hadn't quite noticed in the first half. Seven left footers on the pitch. If you, if you eliminate the goalkeeper, that means there's only three outfield players that are there. Sunday Olisei on for victors. So Sunday Olisei is on, but uh, Villa must score from this maybe. Just coming in in the box, they have got chances, good chance for him against the goalkeeper and it's in. Ali Rajing in the second half for AC Villa. The 16 time league champions are stamping their authority on the ground saying we can score anytime and suddenly that will come in as a very good advantage for a side that is looking for points be yeah, absolutely unmarked at the far post tall poke to the left foot into the back of the net ac villa lead here good Sir. goal for them to have the juggles it's a very good start to the second half for ac villa fred sekajoro Scoring the all important goal for them at the moment. It's a good pressure from AC Villa. Can they pick something from this game? Can they score more goals? Here they come once again looking for the goal scorer Seka Joro. Can't quite easily find him because there's good defending from Swaibu Kabali. This is the kind of start AC Villa wanted. Talk about suddenly in fact. Sekajolo barely a minute on the pitch. And the ball is in the back of the net. Tall pox with his left foot. Mike Butebi must be patting himself on the back for a change timely. Very good change suddenly by Mike Butebi. He's been known for making a couple of those. 
been making lots of substitutions last season that had a very big impact on this Villa side in the second half. Yeah, where Sekajiro can score more than that now is very open to debate. Or team, the young man full of energy now, turning and twisting on that right, cannot easily get past the captain, Dennis Okot. Straight to Dennis Sebogo, takes a long one into the box. The flag is up and that will be an offside against Ahmed Mozasaru. Yeah, that's offside. Caught in the act by the assistant referee. It's going to be difficult for Victor to get back into this. They need to control spells of possession. They need to get the ball away from Villa Fit and they need to be as forceful as they were for only little spells in the first half. Or Tim Chizito. I mean, he's it's, it's the person who thinks should drive them, but they're barely getting the ball into his feet. It's not going to be easy for them to find anything without him involved. Well, they've been on the back foot for most of the game, or even for most of the league games they have played so far. So this must be a mountain very high for them to climb. And that, that is some clumsy defending. The coach, Mike Mita, will not be very happy with Benjamin Ochan. It's supposed to be very easy pickings for him. Actually, he's gifted victors with a set piece. They did not hope, they had no hope of getting at all. Lack of concentration here from the goalkeeper. All he does correct his own mistakes, gets this one straight to his gloves, and even looks to have a counter attack. But well cleared by the captain Joseph Unsubuga. Victors need a very good spell of possession and pressure if they get back into this game. And suddenly they are doing that right about now. Mike Owenya on the right, bring it into the box. They've got a chance here. Ahmed Musasaru was the man who easily could have been at the end of this one. Stays on the ground. And now Victors will try to look for more pressure. But the referee does stop play to attend to him. Ahmed. Victor, the defense, Villa defense caught flat here. It's a great ball played in there by Michael Winya. Musasaru has no excuse here. He has to put this in the back of the net from about three yards out. Good play from Owinia. It's about okay, well, about six yards out, but it should be scoring. Shot blocked partially by Dennis Okot, the captain. Dominic Kabuye not impressed at all. He and Dan Tare. Dan Tare is a former Villa player, former Villa defender. Would have been proud of the tackle Dennis Okot made, but I'm sure he's not happy with Mozasaru's finishing there. So, Victor's showing intent, getting back into this game as well. Could have been 1 1. Probably more drama in this game, but as of now, AC Villa and that one on your screen, Mike Mutebi, very animated as always. He never seems very happy with his side's lead, even though they're leading 5 0. Yeah, always... <laughs> absolutely. There was a bit of applause from him when the goal went in, but even that, I mean, there was not, not a smile broke on his face. It was just the, the, the clapping. It's um, all business again. And that is very clumsy defending now. It's a one-on-one -on -one goalkeeper to beat and can he? Yes, he does! They are back in this game. Victors, no one gave them a chance. And their coach will applaud their efforts, including the goalkeeper, Martin Lule. Everyone thought they were done and dusted, but this is what you get from a wounded lion. Victors are back into this game. Sunday only say he's just come yeah. off the bench and he's doing everything he was sent on to do what a terrible defensive error this one. Oh, he will not want to see that on tv in the highlights later today sunday wallace punishes it so one substitute scores on one end and a substitute on the other terrible terrible mistake but great composure from sunday wallace to slip that under the advancing benjamin ochan one one here and victors have done themselves proud one minute earlier they just missed a chance but sunday wallace was not missing from this range so Yusuf Bagotha is the defender who has made that very big mistake and just within the 50th minute it is AC Villa 1, Victors 1. To Bagotha, uh, he was, he's only 21 by the way, he's a very young Villa side like we said. He was the MVP of the Coca-Cola Championship in 2009, just three years ago. Of the schools, the secondary schools championship we call the Coca Cola, the Copa Cola World Cup, MVP, Bagoth. But he will not want to see this later on the World of Champions. 
no, no, no. MVP can very easily be turned around. So I don't know what to put for the V. Maybe that was a very big mistake for what the basics of defending mark. You've got to make sure you have enough touch on that ball to get it back to your goalkeeper. And Yusuf Bagotha has not done that. And they see Villa are back. Probably the drawing board now. Unless they'll set off a point from this one. Bagotha will not be very happy with his own performance. And suddenly, it's coach Mike Mutebi. Some more pressure on the likes of other Semazi now. They must find that all important second goal. Here is Bogotha once again, making yet what should be yet another mistake, losing ball around the box. And here is Sande Olise, scorer of the goal, does well, gets out, touches onto the ball, tries off the line. He does follow up with the player, can he be dribbled? Yes, he is. And the referee does suggest it is a foul, according to the third official. The referee has come straight where the challenge was committed. I did feel so it was as well. Yeah, the goalkeeper commits himself and decides to go all the way. Mande Chomukama is the man who is tormenting him here. It's a good foul if you're off your line as a goalkeeper. So Benjamin Ochan not having the best start to the second half as this one is floated in. Can they find chances? Yes, they can, but good punching from Benjamin Ochan. Victor still with the ball. This will be another weak shot coming in from Mike Owinya. Ochan having very nervy moments at the moment as Arthur Semazi tries to find a goal on the other side Villa still under good control of this one can they find the all important second goal now here they are Dara having very good exchanges Richard Kulabako but uh, see Villa well pushed back into a throw still have control of this one captain himself Tennis or court. Can't get those crosses in as he quickly finds Muhammad Abdallah. Flag is up. That will be a free kick. So how quickly and well Benjamin Ochan picks up his confidence from the two mistakes he's made so far, Mark. It's going to be very, very important in how Villa carry this game. Mm, absolutely, he's, he's very experienced, Ochan. He should be able to shake that off and. Uh, Push that to the back of his mind. Of course, chance to float this into the box. Yes, he does. Cannot find any of the blue shots. Now, Victor's will try to break away. Here is Otim. He's quick on the ball, but quickly loses out possession. He's still in control of this one. Edward Katende. Henley Kassiria is the man who very easily have kicked off that counter attack, but doesn't the man who came on earlier on in the first half this Victor's side. To the Bell Ugandan Super League is always going to promise you goals. Let us Victor's strike being evidence to that allegation. Suga pushes it forward. Now Victor's know they can win this game or at least pick a point from it. But Villa know it's a game they must not lose if they had closed down their gap between them and the table leaders Maroons. And that is the debate at the moment. The Zemazi is being brought down. But victors must be asking themselves what it is about them and second half comebacks as we look at Villa making their change here. Richard Donakale is the man coming on. It's Daniel Segawa gives way. They left it late against Bunamwa, if you remember. Good second half performance meant that they came from two goals down to get a point. Now they've just equalized against Villa playing much better in the second half than they did the first. Dominic Kavuye must be asking themselves why it takes them that long to get out of the blocks. This is the foul. Samari being upended. One of those left footers I talked about earlier who need now to get Villa back in front. So AC Villa, can they get one over Victors once again? Well followed into the box. They have got chances. That's a nice hit and a great save as well from the goalkeeper. Martin Lule had to stick to his ground it's a good delivery 
The header is majestic, but the save. At full stretch, Martin Lele does really well to keep this one out. That is a very good save, and thankfully for him, it drops back right where he is. Well, Fred Sekajolo looking for his second goal in a few minutes in this game after on coming off from the bench. And that easily could have been it. But of course, the good save from Martin Lule keeping Villa at bay. So for some reason now this is a delicately balanced game. Just when you thought Villa were fully in control of this one, Victors actually have a very big say, including the latest being their corner kick. Quickly taken. Victors floating this one into the box. Can they find chances and Benjamin Ochan? Yes. Fumbles with it, but quickly gets control of the ball. But still, same old question. Benjamin Ochan, the goalkeeper, looks to do if he's get his confidence back as we close into the 90. No, he's got to be on his toes. Uh, clearly, he's going to be busier in this half than he was in the first because Victors all of a sudden are finding their way into that box they couldn't in the first half. Oh, oh. It's, an, uh, it's a complete puzzle to me why they should show up for the second part of games. When I was a player a long time ago, teams that used to do that, which used to start very late, used to be accused of overtraining and being heavy, heavy muscle at the beginning, and then loosening up with time. AC Villa crossing this one into the box. Can they find options? Yes, they can. The latest man on the pitch, this thing, Antani. Take this one back. He's captured. Dennis Sokot. Can do better that, that one. This is where we quickly lose possession. On Akale, was the man guilty? And lots of space, as Mike Terry explains some of the tactics to his assistants. Does that a lot in games, doesn't he? Oh, yes, it does. It's got... A, such a football brain there's uh, lots of theories football theories running around in that brain of his sometimes you wonder if they don't jump on each other up he's been in the past accused of grabbing way too much in way of its instructions and tactics or into his players and demanding way too much of them this is Arthur Semazi being upended he's worked really hard today run himself into the ground nothing to show for it as far as goals are concerned this one floated into the box. Can Avila get anything from this? Victor's pushing that ball forward, but there is completely no Victor's player up front. Everyone is behind the ball now. You know they have a point from this one. Probably try and keep that point. This one is headed back to the goalkeeper. Nakali on the chest. Yeah, I was telling you about um, those back in the day, how they would accuse teams that started slowly of um, overtraining and being heavy muscled and then loosening up later now, those, those were the days when Dominic Kabuya himself played the, the uh, coach for victors and he played for St. Henry's Chitov which was one of the fittest teams uh, in schools championships I played against him with uh, St. Charles Wankasa and with St. Mary's College Sumi for several years in those championships Lamine Cup they used to call it uh, a source of a lot of the talent that you that uh, littered Ugandan football at that time. Most of the, so many of them are coaches now because they were players from Rubaga, from Caltech, from everywhere. And Domazo, who used to call him Domazo then, was at St. Henry's College Tov and was a very good player. Well, one of those accused of, again, like I said, the teams of being overfit and finishing games stronger than they started them. So Victor's trying to break away now. The flag does stay down here as the team running into the box. It's him and Ochan. Can he do anything? Does take it back. And that will be a moment of relief for this AC Villa side as Onakale quickly brings it to the midfield. Abdar Muhammad. Here is Semazi. Can they get something from this counter attack? Semazi. Good running for him in the box. Can he find space in there? And Suga will take that out for a corner kick. This is the downside to high lines. The flag stays down, but he's well on offside, actually. The flags, flag stayed down and they could have been punished. But actually, for Villa, they did not feel for the, sorry for themselves and put their hands up. They went on with no more business of defending and managed to block this one out. Eventually, Konstantin Nalumoso getting it clear. Now, Villa, can they find their second goal in this very attempt? Corner kick. Lots of defending to be done. That one brought into the box. Cannot find a blue shot. Still fully in control of this one. Now Victors will take it away with their lead striker. 
Ahmed Muzasaru straight to the goalkeeper. Benjamin Nishan, who's had a very cagey start. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Be lacking on confidence at the moment. He'll be happy with the statistics. Still 1-1. The captain in Suga takes this one out to plant a Sibila. Another throw in. Kurabako brings this into the box. He's got Semaz. He has one of the options, and that will be an offside. Easy, easy. A chance coming in for him. He wouldn't have scored anyway, but suddenly that will pile more pressure. Yes, yeah, this is a good delivery again. He's only marginal offside. It's just his hand, Semazi. But the acrobatic saves that Martin Ule is making are such that Semazi has had a frustrated afternoon, frustrating afternoon so far. Been caught offside nine times in Sevilla. Most of those have been Semazi has been the guilty party. Captain, 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 captain. captain. So, Otim Kizito, the guilty party. There's a challenge coming in from him on Alan Kiza. That's dangerous play. Very dangerous play. Easily hurt somebody badly and put them out for a long time. Really dangerous play, which Asuman Kabi has got to clamp down on. Kiza is worse for wear here. Uh, lots of options on the bench for this victor's side. Of those is George Obiara. Of course, he's as well joined by the likes of Henry Casirie. He'll be coming on to change a few things as the game wears on. Alan Kiza does not seem player very comfortable at the moment for that tackle. From a team Kizito. The fans in the stadium, pensive mood for them. Most of these are being very fans. Very disappointed considering their team took the lead here. A few phone calls as well will be made, probably updating those at home about what exactly is happening. The discussions continue. The Villa faithful as well. The team Kizijo will suddenly be cautioned. Yeah, it was, a, it was really dangerous play that should not be allowed. I mean, it could easily have hurt Kiza in a bad way. A team. Sorry, a court floats this one forward. He's got options. One of those options is Abdella in the box, straight to the goalkeeper. Martin Lule has made himself. One too hard to beat in the second half, having four good saves to keep his victor's side in the game. Now it is Victor's chance to move forward. Here is the man with the latest caution. A team doing a good job in possession for this Victor's side, but suddenly losing it out. And now Villa can finally break away. Seka Joro, the goal scorer, looking for other Semazi, having a battle between him and the captain in Suga. Semazi does a good job. Here is Alan Kiza, he's back on the pitch, looking fit and fresh. And on the ball again. Cross this one forward, he's looking for Onakale. Chances still coming in for this Villa side and a good run made by Richard Kulabako. Well, you should go into the book for that. And Rasman Kabuya agrees with me. It's a bad tackle from Michael Winya. Paul Musamali was up and away. Up and away, Musamali. You'd expect to have swung a left footer in here. Been upended. Still have the opportunity to, to take that freak against Sevilla. Growing desperate with this passing minute. And he's up and they will check it. Richard Kulabako floats this one into the box. Can he find the no. shot? No, he can't at the moment. Captain Hedzik back down. Out. And they will clear to their lead striker, that is Ahmed. Zasaru does get a touch on the ball. Suga does clear, looking for options up front, but suddenly can't find any of them. This will go straight to the goalkeeper, Benjamin Ochan.
So Victor's stamping the authority on the ground and suggesting they can get something from this game. Certainly have had a better second half than they did in the opening 45. Well, at the moment. Kiza taken out. Study fellow with uh, great low body strength, Kiza. Questions will come up here that actually was uh, for him to actually go down. No, no, no. Now they will carry on with Richard Prabo. Here he is, Kiza, making himself kind of a cult in the center as the second juggle tries to break away. I wonder if we will start the next game coming off the bench and scoring for his civil. Michael Mutelli suddenly must be excited about his exploits. The Sevilla's next game will be up against Simba. Benjamin Ochan takes control of the ball. Three players in green. They are trying to put them under pressure and press high. They know that a defensive error <laughs> resulted in their equalizer. They're looking to see if uh, Nalumoso and Ochan could make the same error again. But they did well. Nalumoso, remember, no, no, no. Captain Hoy Mabusia in the USL last season. And Villa got him from there. So he's got um, at least a full year of uh, top flight football under his belt. At the back for AC Villa, there he is in, uh, in possession, Nalumoso. Did a good job until that big mistake that, of course, raised the cost of all the three points in today's game. Tsubuka pushes this one for the start. The flag does stay down. It's him again as the goalkeeper. And this time round, Benjamin Ochan quickly off his line. But we're in the midfield, suddenly showing there's so many long passes going to be coming out of that. Both goalkeepers will have to stay on their feet. Sunday, Olise, scorer of the goal, running into the box. Can he find a cross in? Yes, he can. Benjamin Ochan had to stay on his feet as well. Good chances coming in for victors now. Absolutely. This is great wing play. Cuts in and uh, plays the ball across the face of the area. Any touch would have put that in the back of the net, but uh, it does well, Benjamin Ochan, to close that out. Where do victors find this kind of form? in the second half of ball games. It is a puzzle that I need to feel. Where do victors find this form? They just couldn't <laughs> need together two, three passes in the first half. And they do this in the second half. This man who's coming off is not triggered. They are come back in the last game. Now he's giving way. No, Victor Kabenge. Yeah, Jim Tosito is coming off. And Victor Kabenge takes over. Victor Kabenge is the man has been charged with getting them probably the second goal. Can you it from there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Left flank. Pick on the ball and on the dribble as well. The question was always whether he was going to finish today's game. It's always been a substitute. For the man in green. On Akale, turning and twisting, does well to keep possession but loses out quickly. To Dennis Sebogo and Villa get themselves a throw in. Getting into those moments that the Belgian and Super League has always suggested lots of drama now. Troy, so many of those we've seen over the years, especially at the top level of the league. Taken quickly, yeah, but of course there will be an offside on the man who's just come on the pitch. Victor Kabenge quickly slotting into that left side. See, Villa have already considered six goals. Today being the seventh goal they have considered this season. Scoring 12, so their goal difference will stay at 15. Goalkeeper delays to get off his line, but quickly. There's good communication between Dennis Sebuguao and, of course, Martin Lule. Now, 
now victors and they surprise everyone here with getting a goal good running into the box and that is straight to the goalkeeper so not lots of trouble Benjamin Ochan with the underestimating his confidence at the moment as Sakajolo now tries to find Samazi but uh, not the biggest of goals so many tired legs out there being shown by Arthur Semazi, not willing to run and chase that ball. So West Sevilla, the second best scorers in the league, are currently finding it hard to break down Team that has considered the most goals that man will not be excited with the game so far Mike Matebi lots of resistance at AC Villa when he just arrived some of the fans suggesting he's more of a KCC legend than a man who should be coaching AC Villa Mark yeah up to now there's still Villa fans who will not accept him it's uh, one of those things football just has one of those things the rivalry between AC Villa and KCC when Mike Mtebi was a player at the peak of the excitement in domestic football was such that they, did, they could not have each other. I remember Jackson Mayanja was playing in that KCC team as one of the best players in the country as a youngster. Several times it was rumored to be crossing over to AC Villa and it could have caused a riot at Villa Park or at KCC or both if it had happened then. Villa might have taken it as a coup but KCC would definitely have Right, but there's some people in Villa who would never have accepted him anyway, and that's how it is with Michael Teddy as well. So, chances for SC Villa here is the captain, Okot Dennis, twisting and running into the box. Does what he's got options. One of those is in of the post, and still chances coming in for SC Villa. But getting off the post, they were as close as it gets. How AC Villa not in front here is unbelievable. Look at the skill here. The nutmeg, Dennis Sokot, brilliant play. And then the, then the shuffle, then the cross, brilliant. The header from Sekajoro. Look at this. Great skill from the captain. And then this two defenders rounded and a beautiful cross. Actually, it's not Sekajoro there. The header is coming from Richard Kulabako and it's smacked off on the crossbar. Chip, very unlucky. So other Semazi makes way. To the side, more changes coming in. Hopefully to freshen up things up for Mike Matebe. But at the moment, Villa being held hostage. And this Victor said, and the brief reader suggests that was an offside. After Semazi taken off, don't seem very comfortable. Seems I've been a knock on him. The lead striker been taken off, and now it seems Onakale is the man who actually has taken those reins, being the lead striker. Not very good news for AC Villa, especially if your lead striker does get off at this kind of the stage as uh, the third official. First person, a couple of messages to Dominic Kabuya. He is uh, complaining about the officiating there. He, he didn't like the offside call on the last on the last possession. Too long one coming in. Rabako just keeps it in position. He's he once again trying to find space. Does well, it's been turning. He brings this cross into the box. Seems a little bit tired, but he's got Abdara. Can he keep this in? Yes, he does. Of the best of return passes. But quickly back to Dennis. Caught we've seen him. Have a very good dribbling skills. And he still shows that once again. As we'll get, get through it. Yeah. Dominic Kabuye not happy at all because of this offside call. And he's got reason to not be happy because the player no, no, no. in question was not offside at all. <laughs> lots of questions will be coming up against officiating world over. No. Suddenly, Asman Kawye will have his name in those books. 
it was one of the assistant referees actually. And for a good chance this coming in up for victors it is two against two as they run into the box can they find space here very good defending from Constantin now Moso, man guilty of making the mistake earlier on that got them level once again Victor Kavenge was the man trying to get at the end of that one good defending from Villa just over 10 minutes to go now at the Mandela National Stadium. 1-1 between AC Villa and Victors. If you've watched most of our games, you will not bet against this game ending this way. Again, again, again. Because anything can happen in the closing minutes. Onakare. Does well keeps possession. Alan Kiza does well finds Onakare once again. The flag does stay down. Onakare running into the box. Can you find space in here? Yes, he does. And AC Villa has scored the second goal. Richard Kulabako has given them the goal that well will most Alan. likely get them all two Alan. points. And once again, that man does not seem that excited. Absolutely, he's actually calling a midfielder. But look at this ball over the top. It's a beauty on a Kali. Very unselfish in laying that one on. And Kulabako tucks it away. It's a beautiful ball from Alan Kiza. On a is on side. But how about the cutback? Brilliant. The finish, easy. Goalkeeper beaten. Martin Lule has been brave today. But this one goes between his legs and into the back of the net. Great finish from Richard Kulabako. It hit the crossbar with a header earlier. He's been rewarded for his efforts in the second half. And Villa back in the lead. So Richard Kulabako has been making the runs on the wings without getting the chances. And now he scored that all important goal. Because it's now AC Villa 2. Pictures 1. So how crucial will that goal be? Not only the next eight minutes will tell us the whole story. As victors have shown us before, they actually can't come into games late. Now Villa know they must tighten their back line. Otherwise, you could see another two old draw. Just like victors had against Punamoya in their last game. This one is brought forward. Will be easily cleared by Constantine Narumoso. <laughs> Two minutes ago, we did say how much you cannot bet against this game ending 1 1. Because the goals in the United Super League this season suddenly mark have been flowing like rain, I should suggest. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> how Villa react to this now is very important because victors have a chance. Plotted into the box, Benjamin Ochan off his line, does well. And tries to play that counter-attack now, but were intercepted. And now Villa have a chance to move forward. Did that cross the line? Yes, it did. SC Villa have struggled to keep a clean sheet this season. Trying against Water 1-1 it was in their last game. Once again conceding against Kira Yanga. The bottom side three when it was they won but still considered that's the statistic the coach will hope to change yeah. again in Somalia played there some tough tackling from Joseph and Subuka that's the man Kabuye today has not been card happy he actually kept his cards in his back pocket not as many fouls in this game as in the first one. Now, here they come. AC Villa once again can they have a chance from this. Onakale running into the box. He's got chances. He does cross the ball. And one of those is, doesn't cross the line. Very good defending. And the third goal could have happened right here. But suddenly... The whistle did come in. But this is good play again. Onakale... He's very unselfish, this player. He's setting it up. But even if Sakajoro had made contact there, he was never going to count. Well, here he is, Sekajoro, scorer of the first goal. Sivia trying to build patiently but gently as well. Tuan is the closest of scores you can find in the Bell Ugandan Super League this season. Battle. 
this victory has still have it inside them, knowing they can still come back into this game. Or Villa will know anything can happen. No, no, no. After Sobuka heads this no, no, no. clear. But no, no, no. straight back from Somali. No, no, no. Technique from him here is Muhammad Abdara does well now. They have chances in the box. This one is brought in. Can the goalkeeper find it? No, he can't. That will go out. Powell does keep into play. It's the corner flag. And Villa do get it on a call. And that. <laughs> we have ended anywhere. Suddenly, David Bala will be happy. He did cross and go over the bar. Michael Mtebi not very happy, not at all excited. He is leading, but he's wondering why they can't find the third goal. So you see Villa's seventh corner now. Down the left, brought into the box. Do they have options? Well, they have many of them. Sekajolo, a man who has proved to be the thorn in Victor's flesh, having lots of chances. Just can't convert his second. So four minutes to the 90 here at the Mandela National Stadium, still 2-1 in favor of the Jugos. Can we see? Let game drama here, or is it going to end just this way? <laughs> Paul Somali does lose out, and uh, well, Victors cannot capitalize on that. And they will listen complaining to the referee that he was brought down. That's man, we have nothing of that. Lots of possession coming in what? for this SC Villa side. Suddenly having a good no. account of it. No. Sekajolo. He's got good pace on him, but does well. Keeps control of the ball. Finds Anakare. Now here is Msamali to bring a wrong one into the box. Villa taking good control of the ball with Mohamed. That will be cleared straight to the captain. More pressure from a civil is expected by Victors now. That will be taken care of by Ahmed. Victors dropping lots of position as the game gets to a close. You think they will need more of that. When a civil Frederick taken shot by the captain on Akale, finds the captain once again. He's got five blue shots in the box. Can he find any of those? He decides otherwise. Good interplay between them. Alan Kaiser still looking for that one pass they can find to break through. Good interplay this coming in for AC Villa. Now, can they find the third goal here? Good running coming in from the captain himself, turning and twisting. Kiza. Good Villa pressure this. Turning and twisting. Opening into the box. They cannot find space. Victor has got seven green shots back to defend. But AC Villa doing well in keeping the ball as we close into the opening. The final. This is Muhammad crossing this one into the box. Can he find any options? No, he can't. AC Villa still in full control of this one. Kulabako Richard will blast that right over the bar. So the referee does give Victor a moment of relief now. Can they move forward? Can they find that second goal? This is taken quickly. Find a Victor Kabenge running into the box. Can they have chances? Here is Muhammad turning and twisting. He's been pulled. And the referee does suggest nothing happened. As Benjamin Achan keeps control of this one. Well, well, well. There's a lot of shot tagging here. But the referee decides to let play run on, allows Victor to try the shot, but 
Shaka Sekatawa fails to beat Benjamin Ochan from close range. If Sekatawa scores here, it stands. And the referee, if Victor's asking for penalty, will say, I gave you the advantage. Muzasaru and the goalkeeper both injured. Muzasaru is the man who was being upended. It's quite a contentious and controversial moment, this. The goals from Alia. First, that finish from Sekajoro just after he had come on. And then, uh, here is the equalizer after that terrible, terrible mistake. Sunday Olise pouncing and putting that in the back of the net. Terrible mistake. Every time you look at it, it gets uglier. Tucked away by Sunday Olise, the sub. At this point, Victor has looked like good for a point because they played really well in the second half. But then came this, Unakale into the box, the cutback, the finish by Kulabako. Good Villa move, putting them back in front here. Richard Kulabako could very easily be the most popular Villa player today if this game ends this way. Four minutes of additional time been signaled by the fourth official so victors have just over three minutes to score their second goal from this can they do that not at the moment because that will be a villa throw-in mark this seems to be enough time if the last few games have anything been anything to go by it's enough time for victors to probably find an equalizer yeah they've got just over two minutes of that four left and it takes just a few seconds for the ball to move from one end to another and into the back of the net we know that really well and if victor still have it in them to push for that equalizer they did against Bunamwaya on friday this bench is pensive right now mike Montevi urging his players to keep their concentration defend gallantly they've done on that occasion but it's still victor's possession and they can come right back at them yeah. now it is villa possession captain joseph suboga he and his frustrated teammates they've given it their all in this game Looks like it's not going to be good enough for a point today. I feel like I can see out this last minute. Also, the best way, of course, is to keep position the way they are. Musamali. Oh! That's right on the edge of the area. Referee doesn't seem to be interested, by the way. Musamali. Is in pain, but Kabi has well play on, and Victor's will try will go down the other end of the pitch, trying to look for the equalizer. Now the referee stops play and goes to check on Masamali's well-being. Lanky, long-legged winger, the good left foot on him. Looked like he was up and away. Somali, yeah, that's a foul. Clearly, he's taken out. How the referee can, can see this as some, something else is, is beyond me. The assistant referee should have had his flag up straight away. Poison, clearly, a lot of pain here. So there was no Oleka. attempt to play the ball at all. Behind the ball. <laughs> Villa still to going forward. Uh, down to, um, to, to 10 men here. Musamali is still out. That's the best way to defend is to keep the ball in this half. He's played well, Richard Onakale. Been an impact sub, really. Done a great job. He 
And the goal scorer, Sakajolo, have really changed Villa's fortunes in the second half. Done well to join Nata Semazi in front and help the, him out until Semazi ran out of gas and got substituted. Villa look to keep possession and see this out. It's 94 minutes on the clock, by the way. Samal is back on there, willing to run again. This time, wisely skipping over the tackle from Joseph Zubuka. I'm sure he doesn't want any more contact after what happened before. He has Musamali full flight and then flying over the tackle. Musa should go any time now because we're well into the fifth minute of injury time. And then there were four added. We're getting into the sixth minute of injury time. I wonder if that is because Kulabako and that foul meant that the referee stopped the play, the, the, the clock again. So there's a sixth minute of injury time to play here, and Victor has got an opportunity to go forward. Is he onside here? The equalizer could come, no? Terrible, terrible attempt on goal, and that signals the final act of the game. He could easily have given Victor a share of the spoils. Sunday only say man who scored the equalizer could not find the equalizer a second time because of a very lame attempt on goal so Sekajolo and his teammates will celebrate it's been a close one close contest but they've managed to pull it off on akale one of the men who has made this happen and almost saw and the defenders that had to stand tall but almost let sunday only said through with the very last kick of the game victors could have had a share of the spoils here but they don't because they couldn't finish so this is how it panned out first goal ball swung in by and then it's scored by seka jolo it was swung in by kulabako the defensive header not taking the ball far away this is unorthodox it was a toe poke really ended up in the bottom corner of the net and then this mistake a terrible schoolboy error punished by sunday olise only had just come on for Victor's, slipped this ball under Benjamin Ochan and put Victor's level. But then this was beautiful. Kiza to Onakale, Onakale to Kulabako. Kulabako slides that into the back of the net. No chance for Martin Lule. Onakale, this was beautiful cutback. And the finish was easy. In the end, here, At Nambole, Mandela National Stadium, it is Villa 2, Victor 1. Now let's go to Andrew on pitch side. So then it is done and dusted here at the Mandela National Stadium with a team that has the most pedigree in Ugandan football, AC Villa, running out with a 2-1 win over a side that is Victors that has honestly struggled with picking points in the Ugandan Super League this season. At some point in the game, they did suggest they had hope of picking results from today's game. But hey, football can be a cruel game sometimes. 2-1 it is for AC Villa and Victors will go back to the drawing board now and think about their next game and maybe picking points and also do not forget relegation is the battle everyone is battling against at the moment and of course i'm joined by the victor's tactician that is dominic kawye good game of football but you've lost what went wrong uh, what went wrong is uh, we got some bad riffing decisions some decision did go away if we had got the, those decisions the game the, it would have been different the, the result would have been different so in terms of tactics, you don't think your side got them wrong? It was all about the tacticians themselves? Yeah, we have improved. In, uh, we have improved a lot since the last game we played. I brought in some few new faces. The Nigerian was superb. He was brought down in the penalty box. You saw it. We didn't get the decision. Well, football, you move on. Otim Kizito did come off the bench in the last game against Bunamoya. You started him in today's game. How was his performance according to you? He did well, but he got tired as the, as the game went on. And so we had to make a tactical decision to bring him off and bring in another new, uh, new face just to, to, to give some strength to our team. 
Yeah. Well, Coach, thank you very much, and I wish you all the best uh, in your next uh, fixture. Well, Dominic, we are suddenly not very excited with how the officials have handled today's game. He does say he got a few chances that did not go to the victor's side. According to him, they actually could have very easily either picked a point or won today's game, but because of the referees, the officials, he says there were a few mistakes made by the men in yellow. And of course, I'm joined by the victors now. Congratulations. Thanks. And uh, let's start off with what do you think you got right today against a very good victor's side? Uh, actually, we've just been clinical that we had we took away the chances we got. We got so many chances, but we were able to take, to pick those two chances. But how otherwise, they also played and had many chances, but they could not take them all. And this is a very important win for SCV, the fourth of the season. Are you guys thinking about winning the title already? No, we cannot speculate as winning a title. We still have a young a young side where they have a lot to learn. You see, sometimes they miss the tactics, interpretations. So we are still pressing on, and we shall take this one to the wire. Dominic Kawiye, the victor's coach, does suggest that the referee was favoring your side. He made so many mistakes. Uh, what do you have to say? I'm not a referee. I'm only coach. I don't want to speak. But otherwise, I, for one, I have seen some mistakes, especially when it comes to infringements. There are some, we are on, even if we are blacks, we are playing a uh, little bit hard game, but there should be some, like the one which are, Taco, which has against Chisa Alan. I thought it could have been a red card, the sent off. All right, it could have been a red card. You also think, of course, referees did maybe have a, quick, a good share on their side of victors. But let's talk about your next game. You do play Simba next. How good should that one be? Yeah, we're expecting a good game. Of course, like I've said, I have uh, young talents who are thirsty for success. And I hope they'll execute very, very good things. And we're expecting a very good game against Simba because there's also a good side. All right, thank you very much. And I wish you all the best you. in your next game. AC Villa, a team that has the most pedigree in Ugandan football. That one, I will insist, are victorious in today's game. Do not forget, we've got lots of more action from other Bell Ugandan Super League tomorrow. Massacre LC are up against yet another newcomer in Entebbe that will be live. And